Game Day Nation, I know you guys are upset that a and couldn't pull off the miraculous 0-3 turnaround season to win the conference championship. I'm going to let you guys know the small little things that cost a and for a victory. Game Day Nation, let's ride. On the very first play, I mean the very first play of the game, a and forces a fumble on defense and they recover and I knew from right here, I said oh yeah, this is the game that I got to turn it up and they going to win it. After that, they didn't waste no time to get the ball up in the air and moving down the field. And after that, like I said, they wasted no time. They just simply drop it off to Zach Leslie as he just takes it down the field and scores the first points of the game. And I'm sitting here like, oh man, they really about to do the impossible, man. I mean, like they was just clicking on all cylinders at the start of the game, man. Offense was working good. Defense was doing better. Like, I don't know what happened. Like I said, man, they were clicking on all cylinders throughout the game. Like, they were letting nothing deep. Like, they were playing very solid defense and solid offense. I didn't think that the game turned out the way it was going to turn out at the beginning of the game. But I ain't going to sit here and lie to you guys. Gardner Webb did turn it up on offense a little bit as well at the beginning of the game, but not like they did in the second and third quarter. And even though the scoreboard said that it was a blowout, like, if you sit here and watch these highlights, a t did their thing. It just came down to one small thing for a t And here it is. Turnovers. Turnovers in this game killed North Carolina's a t shots at it because they turned the ball over at the wrong time in the wrong spot. Their defense just played great, and now you turn the ball over in the red zone for Garner Webb to take it and just go get points. Now, see, I said points instead of a touchdown because the a t defense stood tall and only held it to three points. That's still huge though because that's momentum for the offense. That's like seeing a shooter knock down a free throw. Not it just giving the offense momentum, it gave the defense everything and all the confidence they needed to shut this team down. Because after that, I ain't gonna lie man, they was all over everything. But that's just the nature and beauty of football. One team's defense caused turnovers and they were able to capitalize on it. a t caused turnovers too as well, but the offense just wasn't able to capitalize on it. Who can capitalize off the turnovers that your defense forces and go get points? That's really the name of the game. And like I said, turnovers. Aaron Harris just got an interception for AT to take over on offense for them to go down the field and score, but can they capitalize? Because if they capitalize, that's huge momentum that's gonna give their offense back into this game as Zach Leslie takes it and gets a huge first down on third down, and you can see Coach Watson in the background, letting them know, move the chains. But right before the end of the first quarter, AT drops back, tries to get some yards on the field, but that Gardner Webb defense forces another turnover, but luckily the AT Aggies come up with it. And the reason why them turnovers were so important is because you can't give extra possessions to great teams. That just let Bailey Fisher heat up and his receivers started to get going. But a and that defense stood tall once again as Joseph Stuckey comes in and sticks his defender on third down to force a fourth and goal and a field goal, which ends up getting missed. So that is huge to slow down that offense to give a and offense another chance to come on the field and score. But a and had trouble starting moving the ball and Gardner Webb's defense started to play a lot more better. They started shutting down the run, and on the back end, the DBs were covering. So this gives the ball right back to Gardner Webb. Now this right here is play of the game. Bailey Fisher drops back, looking for a pass, throws the ball, but it's sacked, but the whistle, the ball is not blown dead. Nari Gaither has a million IQ, picks up the ball while it's not blown dead, and takes it and gets a first down. All right, cut the music. Let's get to investigating. Y'all ain't new to this. So the rules are, if the hand is going forward, it is, it is considered as a forward pass, which is incomplete. So, but if the hand is not, it is considered a fumble. Right there, I feel like the hand is going forward a little bit, so he's getting ready to throw the ball, so it should be considered an incomplete pass. But either way it goes, even if it's incomplete or a fumble, the a t defender should dive on the ball either way regardless, and I'm pretty sure Coach Washington was preaching this after the game at halftime on the sideline because that right there changed the game. And you may think, well, why do you think that play changed the game? Because whenever something like that happens, something like this happens. Bailey Fisher throws a dot to his receiver, and now the score is 10-7, and a t is losing to where a t could have had the ball at the 50-yard line with another turnover for their offense to take control and have momentum. And another reason why I feel like that turnover was so important and so huge, because Basha Tutin just takes this 60-yard run to the house. Now imagine if they would have got this and the score was 3-14. That's a whole different momentum change. This is a whole different ball game than the score being 14-10 currently. Yes, a t is still in control of the game, but that 3-14, 10-14 is a huge difference. The reason why it's different 
if the score is 314, this ANT defense is playing a lot harder. They're looking to get another stop for the offense because of the momentum of the game has changed. If you don't learn anything from this video, learn that turnovers in football changes momentum, it changes the game. And that's literally what happened. Like, here we go again, another turnover from ANT on offense. And this literally puts their defense at a huge disadvantage because look at where they get the ball and where they take it to. You can't give a great team that's well coached and well disciplined free offensive possessions. You're asking to lose the game and that's what happened. Now the right back up as Nari Gaither takes this in for a touchdown. Now this puts them at 17-14. You see how quick that momentum changes? And if you wanna see a visual representation on how momentum changes a football game, look at this. ANT was just getting whatever they wanted at the beginning of the game. And now look, they're getting stuffed in the backfield with the run. But Zach Leslie said, man, I ain't going for none of that. Keep throwing it to me as he comes down with this crazy sideline one-handed catch. But on fourth down, Jalen Fowler drops back. He has nowhere to go. Nothing's open down the field. He gets sacked and forces a turnover on downs against Gordon Webb back the football before the half. But like I said, turnovers can change the game. But David Laney was so close from taking that interception and walking into the end zone. That turnover could have changed the game. And I'm pretty sure Coach Washington and Aggie Nation would have loved to win it to halftime 21-24 and get the ball at halftime. Now that would have been a big play. But it's okay because you just got to keep fighting. And as you can see, the Aggie defender jumps off side, so that gives Gardner Webb a free play, and they just go ahead and get a first down with it. And I don't know what the coaching staff seen, but they seen something at halftime that they liked with the run, and they kept going to it. As Naira Gaither goes in for another touchdown, which makes the score 31 to 14. But even being down double digits, they were still looking to fight as they found their tight end slip out on a nice little slip screen. And now ANT is moving the ball down the field. It looks like they got their swagger back as Jalen Fowler drops back, throws a dime right down the middle. He just takes a shot and says, let me go ahead and find one of my biggest receivers, Sterling Burkhardler, and let me get that first down and try to get some points on this board. And again, I said points instead of a touchdown because Gardner Webb's defense turned it up. They held them to three, and those are the last points that ANT see throughout the whole rest of the game. And after that, it just felt like the defense after the half just came out on, I, I don't know, they couldn't stop anything anymore. They missed a wide open tackle right there. And after that, the floodgates just started to open up. Like I said, the floodgates just started to open up. And like I called again, I don't know what the offensive coordinator seen at halftime, but they just started pounding the rock on the ground over and over. They just said, you can't stop us. We're going to run it down your throat and we're going to make you stop us. And the A&T just couldn't. They just literally couldn't stop them. They got all the way down the field. And I guess you see, they finally got down the field, punched it in, and this is the final score of the game, which led the score to be 38-14. to Gardner Webb takes the win in the Big South Championship game. But to Ante, I won't hold your head too much. You start off the season going 0 for 3, then turn around and was in the championship game. Not too many people can say that they had a dramatic season like that. Hats off to Coach Washington and his great team because they started off 0-3 and they could have laid down and folded throughout the conference, but they did it. They fought back. But without further ado, Game Day Nation, we out.